JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for January the 18th. I am Harlan Bospisuros, head of research here at JFD. And I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire a new financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few, sec a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against all but two of the other G10 currencies on Monday and during the Asian session Tuesday. It gained the most versus NZD, JPY and UBP in that order, while it underperformed versus knock and cut. Now the strengthening of the US dollar suggests a risk of trading environment, but the weakening of the yen combined with the strengthening of the loony points otherwise. Therefore, in order to clear things up with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. There are major EU indices traded in the green, perhaps due to the better than expected Chinese data released during the Asian session Monday, as well as due to the People's Bank of China's unexpected decision to cut the borrowing costs of its medium-term loans for the first time since April 2020. However, sentiment deteriorated again during the Asian session today. Perhaps the reason was the sudden jump in uh, US Treasury yields on Tuesday's uh, open following last week uh, remarks by Fed Board Governor Waller. Note that uh, US markets stayed closed yesterday uh, in celebration of uh, the Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Waller said that he was not thinking about a 50 basis points hike in March, but his comments uh, may have put the idea on some investors' minds. It's, uh, it's like telling you not to think of a white bear. What are you thinking right now? Now, just for the record, hedge fund, uh, hedge fund manager said uh, on uh, Sunday that, that the Fed needs to deliver uh, that, uh, that double hike in order to restore its credibility. Now, the next Fed gathering is scheduled for January 25th and 26th. And it's, one, and it's the one just before the March meeting. Thus, we will closely monitor the outcome for clues and hints on whether and how policymakers are thinking to act in uh, March. Now, today, during the Asian session, the Bank of Japan decided on its monetary policy and as, uh, uh, as it was uh, broadly expected, it kept all its policy tools untouched and upgraded its economic forecasts. However, Although officials upgraded their um, inflation forecasts, they expect uh, inflation to stay below uh, their 2% their, their target in the coming years. And they stressed that they will maintain uh, ultra-loose monetary policy, even as, the glob as their global counterparts have already started exiting COVID-related policies. This means that the yen may have a disadvantage due to monetary policy po excuse me, due to monetary policy divergences between the Bank of Japan and other major central banks and may come under renewed selling interest soon. Something, something like that could help Japan's equity market to rebound as well. However, we don't believe that the, the upside trajectory will be a path full of rose petals. Uh, excuse me, after all, both the yen and the Japanese uh, and Japanese equities um, react to developments surrounding the Fed's uh, future plans uh, as well. Let's not forget that the U.S. is, uh, is the world's uh, largest economy and the U.S. dollar the world's uh, reserve currency. Anything suggesting that the Fed may proceed uh, more aggressive than currently thought could hurt the broader, um, the broader market sentiment, resulting in a pullback in global equities and a rebound in the yen. Now, with the US dollar expected to strengthen as well in such case, we believe that uh, dollar yen may be a better choice for, explode, for, for exploiting an uptrend 
rather than uh, euro yen as the ECB is more likely to refrain from hiking interest rates uh, this year. Now as for today during uh, uh, during the as for the, uh, today during the early uh, European uh, European morning after the Bank of Japan decision we got the UK employment report for November. The unemployment rate ticked down to 4.1% from 4.2%, but uh, the net change in employment showed that um, the economy added less jobs than expected in the three months to November than in the three months to October. Average weekly earnings, both including and excluding bonuses, slowed as expected. And although this could suggest that inflation may start easing in the months to come, we don't expect this data set to, uh, the, we, we, we don't believe that um, uh, this set uh, has al uh, will alter expectations around the Bank of England's uh, policy plans. The reason is that uh, tomorrow during the early morning again, we get the CPIs, the UK CPIs for, um, for December which are more recent data and uh, the forecasts suggest uh, that headline inflation may have continued to accelerate in the last month of 2021. This could add more credence uh, to market participants' view that the Bank of England will hit the hike button again at its upcoming gathering and may bring the pound under renewed buying interest. Now as for the rest of uh, today's events, from Germany, we have the ZW survey for January with the current conditions index expected to have ticked down to minus 7.5 from minus 7.4. However, the economic sentiment one is anticipated to have increased to 32.7 from 26.8. This means that analysts see improvement for Eurozone's uh, growth engine in the, next six month, in the next six months and thus the Euro may receive a small boost at the time of the release. However, we don't expect a huge reaction and the reason is that such numbers are unlikely to prompt market participants to massively add two bets over a rate hike by the ECB this year. Remember that uh, last week ECB chief economist Philip Lane said, Philip Lane said uh, that they do not see Eurozone inflation above 2% in the medium term, despite rising to 5% in December, which means that they are sticking to their view of no hikes this year. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of uh, the week uh, much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT just fair and direct.